I have in my very hands what is claimed to be the world's best processor for gamers and creators. This is the brand new AMD Ryzen 9950X3D, a 16 core, fairly expensive CPU that promises to make basically no compromises. That's right, you can have a CPU that has the horsepower for productivity without making compromises to gaming. At least, that's what AMD says with this brand new chip in here. Ooh, look at that. Man, CPU unboxings are so exciting. Hey, look, we're done. All right, video over. For the uninitiated here, this is one of AMD's 3D vCache enabled CPUs. So they basically take their normal CPUs, which to be fair, a 9950X, not a normal CPU, kind of the top dog, at least until today. And then they add a bunch of cash. And no, not like money. I mean, you need to add money. But in exchange, they give you a different type of cash. Cash that lives on the CPU. It's kind of like the RAM in your system where it, it holds the stuff you're actively working on for quick access, except it's way faster than RAM. Like inordinately faster than RAM. And so when you can have a good bit more than a normal CPU, certain applications and especially games get a huge performance increase. And that is the cell of this thing. And there's even some applications that aren't games that get a performance buff. Compared to the normal 9950X, which is a 16 core chip, this 9950X 3D has double the L3 cache from 64 megabytes to 128 megabytes. And you might not think that that is that much, but that L3 cache is literally multiple, multiple times faster than your system memory. And if you can keep crucial information really close to the CPU, that means you can make things go really fast. Now this all sounds great in theory, but how does it look in practice? Let's get a test bench. Oh my God. Oh, this is heavy. Oh. We've got an X870E Aorus Master Motherboard here with some 6000 CL30 Trident Z Neo RAM. And AMD does still recommend 6000 mega transfers per second memory, just with low latency. Now, compared to the previous generation, you know, the 7950X 3D was a good CPU, but it did have its problems. Specifically, now, if you look at the inside of these CPUs, it's not just one CPU like, um, well, most of the CPUs have been for many, many years. Uh, AMD uses something called chiplet technology and they actually have basically two separate kind of like CPUs fused together on a PCB and they call them chiplets. Except that only one of the chiplets or eight cores of the 16 cores in the CPU gets extra L3 cache. The other eight just has the normal amount. So if you're playing something like a game and the game decides to try to use the cores that don't have the extra cache, well, you're gonna have a performance hit. You're not getting that benefit. So on the last generation, it was sometimes a pretty noticeable issue where you were taking a big performance hit. So if you only play video games and you barely do any productivity stuff where you can really take advantage of like 16 cores, it wasn't a good idea to buy one of those chips. But on this generation, thanks to some software stuff, which we'll see shortly, they in theory fixed that, which we'll show you in a sec. I just need to get a cooler on here with uh, some PTM 7950 phase change thermal pad from LTTstore.com. For graphics card, we have an RTX 4090. Um, this isn't the latest and greatest from NVIDIA, but it is what AMD tested with in their press deck. So that is what we're using for now. While we wait for that to turn on, let's talk a little bit more about the specific specifications of this CPU compared to last generation. A lot of the specs on paper look the same. So most of this is kind of architectural. However, there are some big ones. Compared to the 7950X 3D, the new version has the 3D vCache underneath the chip rather than on top. And they use some fancy technology called through silicone bios to electrically connect it through the 3D vCache, which you might wonder why. The big thing is, now you can have those cores sitting on top, running at whatever speed you want, overclock to whatever you want, whatever power you want, and you don't have that insulating layer like stuck on top, uh, preventing you from cooling the cores properly. So this new chip now has 170 watt TDP, like the 9950X non-3D. The previous generation was limited at 120 watts. We've got the nice new TSMC four nanometer node. We have a little bit more L1 cache than last generation. But other than that, 
It's kind of like a 9800X3D with eight more cores slapped right next to the ones with 3DV cache. And in theory, hopefully in games, it performs pretty much the same. There is a technically higher max boost clock, which is interesting. But what I suspect we'll see is that the cores without the 3DV cache, the extra ones are gonna be able to clock higher than the ones that do have it. And from what I understand, there's actually a setting in the BIOS now where you can um, pick your priority basically. So if you run applications that don't really use the 3DV cache and you could benefit from higher clock speed, you can actually tell it in the BIOS to prioritize using the cores with higher clock speed rather than the ones with vCache, which is the opposite of the default behavior. However, if that's the case, you probably shouldn't buy this CPU. And look, wow, it's a computer. You can even fit our sponsor on here. Secret Lab. Their Titan Evo Ergo gaming chair is ready for both work and play. It's got a whole bunch of adjustment options to keep you sitting in an ergonomically correct position, like four-way lumbar support, multi-directional armrests, and even a few different size options. You can even customize your chair with sleeves and swappable armrests for a personal touch. Plus, they have a warranty period of up to five years. So go to lmg.gg slash secretlabfc to get your own Titan Evo Ergo chair today. And now that we're booted up, we can take a look and make sure our cache is there. Woo, 128 megabytes of L3 cache. Sheesh. Let's take a look at how this all works. Now I got this cool piece of software called Park Control, <laughs> which is supposed to let you tweak like core parking, which if you're not familiar, basically just means that core is being like kind of temporarily turned off so that the software on the computer and the operating system tries not to use them. And that is very important, like I mentioned before, when we're in a game, we only want to be using the cores that have 3DV cache enabled since most games can't take advantage of more than like eight or so cores anyways. And if you start dipping into the cores with less cache, usually you get a performance loss. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and load the built-in solitaire and let's see if we can see, hey, look at that immediately. So if I'm focused on solitaire, you can see that half of the CPU cores, which is a 16 of 32, so that's the eight 3DV cache cores as well as their extra multi-threads are enabled, and then the other half are completely parked or turned off so that the operating system doesn't use them. And if we go into Task Manager, this is taking its sweet time. Okay, you can see we've got like the first block of cores or some of them are being used at least, and then the rest of them had a spike, and then now that the cores are parked, there's no activity going on there whatsoever. Now specifically, they've updated their provisioning package as well as the 3D vCache optimizer, both features that are part of the AMD chipset driver. So if you have an existing 7000 series X3D chip, like the 7950X3D with two CCDs, highly recommend updating the chipset driver. You're gonna get pretty much probably some free performance in certain games. And then they also added a new thing, which actually I can see in Task Manager here. We can see the vCache performance optimizer service, but there's also now an application compatibility database service. Now what this application compatibility database service actually does, it uses a Windows compatibility toolkit called Processor Count Lie, which as the name implies, it'll just lie to the app and say, oh, I only have eight CPU cores and 16 threads, so that they only use the vCache, and it's for a specific set of games. Now it's important to note you need Game Bar installed if you want all of these optimizations to work because they rely on Game Bar to know whether or not a game is running, at least to some degree. And that's also helpful because if it doesn't detect it for some reason, you can manually tag something as a game with Game Bar and then it should start to work, which is, um, I wanna try that actually. Oh, I have to go Windows G while it's the active window. Oh, I see, okay, now and then I go, hey, there we go, okay, so. Remember this is a game, Tech Power Up GPU Z. So if I click that, close this now, go back. Look at that, it works! You see, now we've got 16 of 32 cores only. Half of them are parked when we're using GPU Z. And if I click off of it, take it out of focus, boom, it unparks the cores. So the system works. Now, I know that some people don't like Game Bar, but this way it's like, a thing that's already built into Windows that you can use to flag apps and you don't have to run any like weird software. It's already built into the chipset driver. There's no like separate Intel performance optimizer app that you have to open and play with. It just pretty much just works. Let's look at the geo mean of all of the games we tested at low, which is only the three. It does still technically put the 9800X3D on top at low, but 
it's a close race, and this, again, is only across three games. Uh, I'm sure if you were to test across even more games, you would see probably a tighter variance. But overall, that is a really good showing. That makes me really excited about this chip. Wow, Rocket League can actually use some cores. Even at 1080p max settings, the 9950X and X3D are on top, neck and neck, then the 9800, and then Intel and last gen on the bottom. We've got Warhammer. Yeah, that seems pretty GPU limited at Ultra. They're all the same. Same story as we saw in F124. Oh, I almost forgot, Stellaris. Uh, this is kind of like a top-down RTS game, uh, and this benchmark specifically simulates one year of game time. And while the numbers aren't crazy different, uh, this game is super consistent in the benchmark, with these numbers only varying on a given CPU uh, about one second, uh, if that even. So the 9950X3D and the 9800X3D are basically on par, but we do have a bit of speed up from Intel from the non-3DV cache variant, and definitely a huge speed up from last gen, and that is good to see. In all the games we tested, pretty much, the 9950X3D is performing as AMD said. It's damn good for gaming. But let's look at productivity, because that's what this chip is really for. The content creator, the engine nerd, the whatever, who also games. And look at that, Puget Bench. In Photoshop, it's really not a big difference. It's a bit faster with a few more cores, but man, this is really close. And in Premiere, you get a little bit of a bump. But overall, this new chip is still on top, uh, even if the performance improvements are not huge in Adobe apps. We all know how well optimized those are. In the Blender Monster benchmark, it's neck and neck with the non-3DV cache and faster than the rest. Good to see. Cinebench. Man, Intel does really good in Cinebench. Either way, this is the only test we did, I think where <laughs> Intel's 285K is actually on par with these AMD chips. And that is like really close. If we go to single core, Intel wins out a tiny bit. In handbrake, oh, I lied. Uh, Intel actually does have another spot where they're winning here, a uh, little bit above everything else. But in H.264, the 9950X3D and its non-3DV cache counterpart are on top with a good lead. So in terms of productivity, the 9950X3D is basically on top, unless you happen to be AV1 encoding on CPU um, or running Cinebench. <laughs> in the other applications, it, it was right up there. And in games, it seems to perform pretty much neck and neck with the 9800X3D, um, except for a couple edge cases there still seems to be. Uh, I'd be interested to see if City Skylines uh, does see further improvements with some future chipset driver updates, or if you might be able to remedy that with the game bar trick I told you guys earlier. Um, but what I want to try now is all of those tests were done with PBO off. And if you're not familiar, PBO is like AMD's automatic overclocking thing. You turn it on in the BIOS and it kind of removes a bunch of the power limits and stuff, because this is a fully unlocked chip. I wanna just do that and run Cinebench and see where we get. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's check out the power and thermals because I'm really interested in that. Uh, the 9950X3D average CPU power during a Cinebench run around 200 watts. Our temperatures were around 75. It's clocking, you know, between 5.2 and 5.5-ish gigahertz. Even though Intel did edge out like a tiny bit of a win, it's at a fair bit more power. You're talking at least 10% more power, and it wasn't 10% more multi-threaded performance uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And at max, it was more than 10%. You're talking 20, 25% more power. Damn, it almost seems like AMD made like a really good CPU here. This thing crushes in gaming, crushes in productivity, and it does it while drawing less power. Even like, like in a game, if we look at F1 2024 at 4K with ray tracing on, which is not gonna be a huge CPU load, you know what, the average of the 285K is a tiny bit lower in this very GPU bottlenecked test. I mean, the 9800X3D is like barely even drawing power if you're going for efficiency. Now, to be clear, these are two very limited situations. Um, there are probably circumstances, depending on your application, where one might be more efficient than the other, but overall, seems like a very good showing for AMD. Um, and those Intel chips are very efficient in certain applications. Honestly, not a ton higher on the wattage. I think we said the average before was like 200 and now it's 226-ish. Based on the data I can see from the labs testing with PBO on, it looks like we're getting about 100 megahertz more on average. And our score is somehow lower, woohoo. <laughs>
Compared to the motherboard default uh, PBO not set to enabled, but auto, we're doing about 20, 25 watts more on average and getting somewhere between 70 to 120 more megahertz on average across the cores. Um, but we did get a little bit lower score, so who knows? <laughs> It, uh, it's definitely not something that's always going to make your stuff better. I kind of want to just play games on this thing now, but like overall, this CPU seems like a banger. What's the price? This new chip, the 9950X3D 16 core 3D cache, seemingly monster, uh, is $699. It's the same price as last generation, a fair bit more expensive than the non-3D cache variant, and a lot more expensive than a 9800X3D. So if all you do is game, that's still going to be your best gaming option. But if you do other stuff, things that can use more cores, if you're running Premiere, if you're doing, I don't know, crunching pie on your computer, this chip, as far as we've seen today, can seemingly do both almost as good as a 9800X3D. In most of the situations we saw, the 9800X3D and the 9950X3D were pretty much neck and neck. And you're not compromising on the productivity to get that gaming prowess. I mean, this thing is a is an absolute unit of a processor. And uh, yeah, GG AMD. It's not cheap, but if you use your computer for work and getting stuff done and making money, this could be a very, very good option if you also game. And maybe check out the um, 5600X 3D short circuit I did a, a while ago. That was, uh, that is still a really solid chip that's pretty cheap. Bye.